Man, in Matthew chapter 28, we'll probably go to John 20 as well. Uh, but let's, again, we, we're digging in. We got a short amount of time. So I'm giving you these scriptures for you to follow along. In Mark chapter number nine, verse number 31, our title is, Thus Heareth the Lord. I want you to write that down. Thus Heareth the Lord. Now, I know that kind of threw you for a loop. We're introducing an entirely new concept. Because, of course, what we're familiar with is, thus saith the Lord. That's what we hear all the time. Thus saith the Lord. But I want to come from a different perspective. Thus heareth the Lord. I want to introduce in this concept because, believe it or not, it has been overlooked. It has been ignored, if not all altogether uh, forsaken, the very concept of the Lord listening and hearing. The series is still the first seven sayings, the seven first sayings of a risen Christ. But my position now is that his sayings, what he said first, is a result of what he first saw, what he arose to upon his resurrection, when he got up, what he faced, what he encountered, as a matter of fact, his first words were in response to what he first saw. I want you to write that down. His first words were in response to what he first saw. He didn't just start speaking. But he, he, he spoke in response to what he saw, to what he heard. And again, under the climate of thus saith the Lord. And I hear the Lord saying, that's what we hear all the time. The Lord told me to tell you. Prophets are everywhere. Prophets are popping up in every nook and cranny, in every corner of the globe. Everyone's now a prophet. Everyone is now portending to be a mouthpiece for God. And so everyone is saying, thus saith the Lord. Or I hear the Lord saying, or the Lord told me to tell you. God told me to tell you. God spoke to me and said. That's what you hear all the time. I've heard that all my entire life. Thus saith the Lord. I hear the Lord saying, the Lord is telling me to tell you. The Lord told me, the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord spoke to me. God said. Rarely, if ever, do you hear God heard or God thus heareth the Lord. Or, because my position is God is not always talking contrary to what we may think, contrary to what we may believe. God is not always talking. But I can tell you this. God is always listening. I want you to write that down. God isn't always talking. But I can tell you that God is always listening. And what is he listening uh, for? He is listening for what we're talking about. He's listening for what we're saying. He's listening to what we speak about. We believe that the only time God hears us is when we pray. But you do know that God hears us even when we're not praying. God hears us in our conversations that we're saying to, uh, to everyone. He's, he, it's a scary thought when we think about it. That prayer is not the only time God hears us. And he hears us when we talk to each other. He hears our doubt. He hears our, our flesh. He hears our carnality. He hears our, our foolish conversations, our unbelief, our disbelief, our fear, our fear mongering, our cynicism, our skepticism. He's listening to the conversations we have with coworkers, with, with colleagues, with, in social circles and in, at parties and and outings, and as we're walking in the street, and as we're talking to family members, and that, it's a scary thought, it's a sobering thought, when we consider that prayer is not the only time God hears us. So again, God is not always talking, but God is always listening. What is he listening for? 